from the city of brotherly love. This is Shark Bite Biz with David Strausser. You did it again. You just arrived to the season eight finale of Shark Bite Biz. I'm your rock star wannabe host, David Strausser, and this is your place to learn how to grow a business during a complete global chaos. Again, this is our season eight finale. Unfortunately, we've got to cut this season short and we'll be back in a few months. Don't worry. Uh, Going to take a little bit of an extended break. I mean, we got, I think this is 243 episodes and uh, working through some things, but we will be back bigger and better than ever very shortly. So today we're going to be talking about having a fighting chance to win not only in life, but your business as well. Who do we have today? None other than Deb Cryer. Deb's unwavering stance is clear. Fine isn't an option in the face of cancer. Having experienced its impact both personally and professionally, she rejects the status quo. For Deb, the genuine cure for cancer transcends medicine. It's about embracing life wholeheartedly. So without further delay, let's bring Deb and kick off season eight's finale right now. Business strategy. Deb, welcome to Shark Bite Biz. You just became Shark Bait. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. We have a tradition on the show. We ask every single guest, doesn't matter how famous mm-hmm. or infamous you are, <laughs> uh, which is, hey, what's your experience? What's your background? <clears throat> Basically, in a nutshell, tell us what makes Deb Deb. Well, I am pretty gosh darn special. Um, I'm not sure about famous or infamous, but, you know, I like to think I'm special, right? But what, you know, what makes me special is I am a warrior. Um, I, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an only child. I'm from a very small town in Colorado, and now I live in the gigantic place of Atlanta. But I am a warrior. Um, In 2015, I was diagnosed with cancer, with breast cancer, had, you know, kind of some ups and downs. The uh, final diagnosis is stage four metastatic triple positive breast cancer. Oh, sounds horrible, right? Yes. Um, About died several times, all sorts of things, been through all sorts of different things, developed skin cancer. So that was number two. But Uh it was easy peasy, right? Zip, zip, zap, zap. And that was that. And then last summer they said, guess what? You've got thyroid cancer. And I was like, oh, that's annoying. I said words that we can't say on this program, right? No, Um, no. YouTube does not like those. Yeah, I know. (laughs) They get mad at those words. And so I just said, oh, shucky derns, right? Um, Uh And and to get my thyroid uh, gland removed, that was surgical procedure number 33. So I've been kind of through the ringer, but you just keep going, right? I tell people every day that I am not looking up at six feet of dirt is a good day. Um, So we started an initiative called tryingnottodie.live to help anybody else who might be on this journey, whether themselves or someone they know. Wow, that is amazing. Amazing. In fact, you have a phrase that says, no matter what, just L-I-V-E, live, Mm -hmm. okay? Um, What is... I mean, LIV is an actual acronym for something. Explain to me, what is LIV? What is that acronym to you? Right. Well, so it's, you know, it's, it's trying not to die dot LIV. And so the, the premise is that when we have something so serious that happens to us, we get so engrossed in trying to not die that we forget Mm -hmm. that we really have to live. And whether that's five minutes, five years, 50 years. Um, So it is an acronym. You need to lead your tribe. You know, like I said, I'm a warrior. And so I build my tribe around me. Um, And then we're going to invigorate your soul. You need to put yourself first because it is your life that's on the line. And then voice your feelings. You know, we have to be honest. The, you know, the only thing that is actionable is truth. So many times people say, hey, Deb, how you doing? And you go, I'm fine. And that's, you know, you're never fine, right? Sometimes you're really good. Sometimes you're not. But yeah, no, we have to be honest. And then, of course, elevate your mindset. Um, Because we are going to know that no matter what, we will be fine with what happens because we're going to be living. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let me ask you, for people that are out there in bad spots, whether Mm -hmm. it's cancer, as you have had numerous times now, 
um, you know, and it's really empowering to hear your story and how many times, uh, you know, you've kind of, uh, I don't know if I want to say embrace, if that's the right word, but it's okay. We it. can say embraced. <laughs> okay. Like just kick mm-hmm. butt with it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how do you get people to elevate their mindset, which with such negative, you know, potential mm-hmm. consequences, that's hard. I mean, hey, coming from a is. sales world, you yeah. deal with rejection every mm-hmm. day, you know? Mm-hmm. And you've kind of got to block out the the rejection and focus mm-hmm. on the positive. Mm-hmm. Is it kind of the same thing or is it, it different? It is. You know, and I think a big part of it is we do need to acknowledge that it sucks, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and whether it's something as simple as like the little skin cancer on my arm that they just took off very quickly or something like stage four cancer, because that doesn't go right. away. Um, and so we acknowledge it. We know that those feelings are always there. And then we go on. You know, because we can either be dying or we can be living. And so that really is what we need to decide. What is it that we're choosing? And even if we're healthy, there are so many people, right? We know those people who are just waiting to die. Right. No, you know, we got to live every single moment, whatever it is. Right. No, no, that's true. I mean, you you do have to live and not let uh, things get you down mm-hmm. and just kind of, mm-hmm. you know, find a way to move forward. I think some right. people kind of struggle with that. Mm-hmm. They do. And a lot of it is because so many times you're alone, um, you know, and 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 even if you have people around you, you feel like you're alone. And yeah, we are the only people going through whatever this is. You know, nobody else had surgery. Nobody else had chemo. Mm-hmm. Nobody else had all those things. But it's it's about making sure we're not alone and letting those people right. in. And it's the tough part is, I mean, you know, I'm an only child. And so I'm going to do it by myself. I don't need help. Right. And I'm an independent right. woman. No, we all need other people and we need to let them help us. They want to help us. So let's let's honor them by letting them do that. So as part of uh, the honoring of that, I mean, you have something that you call the I'm fine syndrome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, let's let's dig a little bit deeper into sure. that, because I think that's an important topic mm-hmm. to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, it really is. Like I, I said, you know, people will say, how are you doing? I'm fine. Whether it's your doctor, whether it's your friend, whether it's your spouse, all of those things. And that's just our standard answer. Right. For mm-hmm. Whenever we were probably first starting to talk. How you doing? Fine. <laughs> right? Right. And, but a big part of it, we don't want to bother people. We don't want to intrude, <laughs> you know, and in many cases, we don't want to admit it. We don't right. want to admit it is not a good day. So, you know, if you're, if you're answering that question, I, you know, again, be honest. It, now, there is TMI, all of those things, you know, if it's just somebody in the elevator saying, Hey, David, how you doing? You can say I'm fine. And that's perfectly acceptable. If it's, you know, your, your friend, somebody who really cares, then you can say, I'm having a really great day. I'm feeling good out there, kicking it, doing everything, or, you know, it's not a good day. I've, you know, woke up and just didn't feel right. Things aren't going quite the way I wanted. But it is about, you know, doing those things. And 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 nobody's a mind reader, right? right. You know, and especially doctors. I mean, that is one mm-hmm. of the things because we all do that. The doctor says, how you doing? I'm fine. And then we're annoyed when they didn't catch whatever was wrong. Right. Um, you know, I remember my dad had that happen one time. He was when he was you know getting up there in age. He went to the doctor. He came back. I said, well, what they do with your sore throat? And he said, well, nothing. I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, I said, what, what, when you told him you were sick and he said, oh no, he's the doctor. He should just know. Right. He got shipped back to the doctor, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what are some of the questions that he should have asked his doctor? You know, for any of these, you, and okay, so, so let's deal with it. You know, if you have cancer. So some of the questions are, what type of cancer do I have? Mm-hmm. Not just you've got cancer. What are this? What are the the survival rates? What are the treatment options? What alternatives are there? Is my lifestyle going to have to change? Um, you know, what do I? What are the first steps? All of those various things, and and I always tell people when you're having those first really serious conversations with your doctor, where you're where you're asking those questions, take somebody with you 
You know, when we go to the doctor and we've got the flu, you go home and you go, when was I supposed to take that medicine? You know, yeah. and and when we when we know we have cancer, our brain shuts off. And so we need somebody else who's going to ask those questions, who's going to write down those answers, who really is going to make sure that we stay on track and, and we get the answers that we need. But, you know, that the doctors and, you know, or, or any of your, your care providers, again, you have to ask the questions there. Now, they might say some specific things, but you need to ask those things that are maybe on your head and, you know, that are just kind of noodling around in there. Um, it's interesting. I love my oncologist. I've been there for eight years. Right. And mm-hmm. they have signs on every door that says or every exam room door. If you did not get your questions answered, do not leave this room. Oh, that's great. I love that, you know, because yeah. we, you know, sometimes they all, you know, they, they start looking at their watch or somebody knocks and they says your next 49 appointments are here. Um, you know, but yeah, for something this serious, nah, you make them answer mm-hmm. your questions. I've made them come back when I've gone, uh, I forgot something, um, you know, and, and of course, there's other ways to communicate with with your doctors that the doctor that is managing because I'm like the bingo card kid. Right. You know, I have all these different doctors. Um, yeah. And so the, the one that the, the endocrinologist who treats my thyroid cancer, he uses online really, really well. And I can send him a question and it's never gone more than a couple hours without him answering now, you know, during the business that's day, awesome. but yeah, I mean, he's fabulous at it. And, and so that's, that's one of the ways where I get my questions answered for him or from him. Oh, that's, that's great. So I've got to mm-hmm. ask, I mean, you have uh, so many health issues, you have a podcast, mm-hmm. you're an entrepreneur. Uh, how do you manage all of that? Oh, sometimes I go a little crazy. You know, I told somebody <laughs> yesterday, can I clone myself? Really? Uh, you know, it's one of the big things, and and I'm still learning this, is to delegate. <laughs> you know, now right. obviously I can't delegate my health stuff, but I can delegate work. Um, I do a lot of volunteer projects, so I can make sure that I'm I'm delegating there. It is about staying kind of somewhat organized. I mean, some people are better at it, but most people are better at it than me. But, right. you know, it's it's been funny because I stayed working the entire time. Now, one of the times when I have major complications, I was in the hospital for seven weeks, pretty much out of it that whole time. But most of the rest of the time, hospitals and doctor's offices have really good Wi-Fi and I can mm-hmm. work wherever I have Internet. So I just keep working right along. And I think it's also good for my my soul and my brain because it gives me something else to be focusing on rather than, oh, how pitiful am I today? Um, but yeah, you know, it's just, it, it, we've all learned how to, well, that, you know, now we all know, you know, sometimes multitasking, mm-hmm. we don't get anything done well, right? But we all right. do multiple things at the same time, whether we're, you know, not healthy, whether we have a bunch of kids, whether, you know, all of these things. And so it just kind of gets thrown in there with everything else. Life work balance, mm-hmm. I guess you can say in a way. Kind of, except, you know, there's no balance because that's right. to me, balance is 50 50, right? It's yeah. what fire needs put out right now is maybe the easiest right, right, way to right, do right. it. Right. No, totally understand. Mm-hmm. What about the finding humor during your cancer journey? How important has that been to you? Because I always oh. love to uh, have humor on the show and I've had guests throw zingers at me and I've thrown a few zingers at guests and we've had right. some good laughs in the past. And mm-hmm. uh, it always makes it fun when you're learning about business you or hearing someone's story fun. to laugh. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's one of these. Now, we we know that physically and mentally, there are very valid reasons for humor. Um, you know, it, it releases endorphins, all of these various things. And, and so you want to do that. But, you know, I finally have all of my doctors used to the fact that when something happens, you know, like when they when they, you know, who knows what I'm going to say now, you know, yes, there are times you shouldn't be humorous, you have to be serious. But, you know, they always know what is your name and date of birth. And I look at them and I say, Anastasia Beaverhausen. And, you know, and and now in the, I'm actually, even though this is this diagnosis was in 2015, I'm still in treatment. I go in every 21 days and have an infusion. And so they have decided that I'm not Anastasia Beaverhausen. I am Princess Anastasia <laughs> Beaverhausen, right? There um, you go. And so, yeah, you know, and 
you you really do have to have as much fun with it as possible because it's you know it is pretty icky but you know yeah you know if if we can poke fun at it and i'm poking fun at myself i yeah. you know would never make fun of, of somebody else i'm laughing at myself and you know and and so that's kind of the, the the best thing you know i've had weird things happen like you know i, I obviously lost my hair and um, it all came back. This is my hair. Yes, this yeah, is my okay. hair. But I've had people tug on my hair. And I'm like, what the? And they said, well, we wanted to know if it was a wig. And I'm like, no. You couldn't just ask. <laughs> Would you have pulled it off? I mean, it was just, you know. Um, and That's yeah, crazy. I mean, humorous things like that. You're like, I can't believe that happened. I cannot believe that happened. Um, oh, I totally agree. Yeah, you know, and and but yeah, you have to laugh. And you, know, my uh, my kidney doctor says, you know, and I see her every three months. You know, I mm-hmm. I, re- I spend half my life in doctors' offices, but um, you know, she tells me she says, you know, I love it when you come in the office because you make me laugh. Uh, and she has a horrible job, right? You know, it's, yeah. it's a wonderful job, but it's also very emotional. And she loves it when I'm in there because I'm laughing and I'm joking and, um, you know, all sorts of things. And she, you know, they actually try to schedule me for like after she's been over at the hospital doing the serious stuff because I bring right. her back up into, to, you know, laughing. Uh, things. That's awesome. That is so cool. I mean, I feel business period humor is just mm-hmm. critical, right. you know, mm-hmm. uh, again, especially in the sales biz dev mm-hmm. side of the world. Right. It's one of the things that really, I think, separates me as sales rep as mm-hmm. a biz dev specialist mm-hmm. you know executive whatever it may be right. at that point of time in my life from other people is that mm-hmm. i can get the people in the room to laugh even mm-hmm. if it's a quirky or corny joke right. uh you know they're smirking because i'll mm-hmm. say the things that everybody's thinking but no one will mm-hmm. say out loud and mm-hmm. i do it the right oh, way yeah. and yeah. i make myself mm-hmm. impressionable upon those mm-hmm. people right yeah you know it's it, it goes back to the old adage that we we do business with people we know, like, and trust, right? Right. And humor is a huge part of that because it it brings us down to all the on the same level. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. One last major question before we start getting some uh, info about you and all your projects and stuff like that. Let's talk quickly about the unsung heroes that you mm-hmm. have during this journey of uh, cancer and uh, any other types of problems mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, my my unsung heroes are definitely the people. Now, people would say that I'm the hero. No, the caregivers are the people who are our heroes. Um, my husband, obviously, top of the list, uh, could not have survived any of this without him. But it's, you know, it's, it's everybody who helps take care of us. Mm-hmm. I've got, you know, I have some absolutely wonderful friends who really stepped up and said, what can we do? Um, you know, other family members, people like that. And, and I think what happens is a lot of times we just assume that they will do that. No, you know, even if they're going to do that, we still need to be so right. incredibly grateful and thank them. You know, that was always what my mom would say. Don't forget to say thank you. Um, you know, and and so I, it really is something that, you know, even if I'm not feeling good, I'm like, thanks for bringing me the thing that I threw up in. <laughs> <You know>? uh-huh. <laughs> That is that is great. So, uh, Dev, I mean, you have such an empowering, amazing story and just how you've kind of got through all these different health struggles and they're still getting through all mm-hmm. these struggles. I mean, I can't imagine how taxing it is running a business, doing a podcast and yet having to go in for an infusion every 21 days. That's got to be crazy. Like you're an inspiration, I think, for everybody out there listening to Shark Bite Biz right now. Please tell us how can people get in touch with you? How can they listen to your podcast? Mm-hmm. What other things do you want to promote? Cool. Throw it all out there. Let's hear it all. I love all. it. I love it. Well, if you really want to know about the, the initiative, it is trying die.live L-I-V-E. So not dot com dot live. Um, and on there, you will find ways to contact me. We also have a, a Facebook group and the links are, are there. It is a private Facebook group. And it's private only because I don't want the, shall we call them snake oil salesmen to, you know, who are going to cure us. 
Um, right. You know, I don't want them to be part of the group. And, and so we do have this great group. It's a very safe place for people to share the good and the bad. Uh, you know, and, and so we do that. My podcast is thebusinesspowerhour.com. Been doing it a long time. Need to have yes. you on as a guest. I think that oh, would be absolutely I'd love to fantastic. Be um, you know, and and it's it is, you know, obviously it is a business podcast uh, yep. that lasts an hour. It's funny how sometimes people don't get that, right? Yep. Um but uh, you know, and and those those are the best places you can find me on LinkedIn. Now on LinkedIn, I'm Deborah D E B O R A H. Um, but there's not a lot of us. I think there's three Deborah careers in the whole world, so I'm pretty darn special. Like I said, at yes, the start. you are. Um, so it's pretty easy to find me. I think I am the only one with this bright red hair. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. And as every guest out there knows of Shark Bite Biz, we will have a link down to Deb Cryer's information right down below that little, little blurb we're going to put about the episode for uh, today. Thank you so much for joining oh, us. I'm and like honored. I said, it's I'm such so an incredible and inspiring you. story to hear. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, cheers. Wow, that was a wholehearted, really just true deep conversation with Deb. It was incredible and amazing, wasn't it? First though, you all know the routine if you found this interview helpful. If it sparked those warm and fuzzies, do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. But if you really want to help us out because you know Shark Bite Biz is the greatest kept secret in the world of small business, please do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. But if you really want to help us out, you know, share us out to your friends, your family, your colleagues, anywhere you dwell on the interwebs. You know, we grow and bring you experts each and every week just to help everybody grow with the three G's, personal, professional, and business growth. So please like, share, subscribe the channel, and, uh, you know, we'll be extremely grateful. So anyways, thank you, Deb, for coming on. This was such an inspirational story for us all to hear about how you just keep fighting on and look at the positive things in life. That is incredible, and I hope your story went out there and touches somebody that's watching. Question of the day. What have you fought through to keep your life positive? Leave a comment down below on YouTube. Do you want to be on the show? Interviews at sharkbitebiz.com. Please, if you're watching the channel, join the channel. $3 a month. Every dollar in is every dollar out. And uh, I guess I'm signing off for season eight, and we'll be back in a few months. You all know this by now, but I'll say it for the last time for a few months. I'm David Strausser. This is Shark Bite Biz. We'll see you all next season. Cheers. You've just experienced Shark Bite Biz with Dave Strausser. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the show to help us spread the word about personal, professional, and business growth. Want to be on the show? Send an email to interviews at sharkbitebiz.com. Till next episode.